Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. This episode is the first of a two-part introduction into a book called Matchbox Dreams. In this story, we are going to meet some little mice who love to have adventures in dreamland. Matchbox Dreams, written by Douglas Schwartz. Chapter One, The Introduction of Harper, Remy, and Millie. Harper, Remy, and Millie aren't your typical stuffed animals. They possess the ability to come alive in dreamland. Oh yes, dreamland is real. It exists in your mind, but it only comes alive when you are sleeping. Just like how the night is never around during the day, dreamland is only around when you are sleeping. So what about daydreaming, you might ask? Or what about pretend play? Well, Harper, Remy, and Millie love to be with you when you are daydreaming or pretending. But they will just look and act like all your other stuffed animals and toys. The real magic begins when you go to bed. As soon as you fall asleep, Harper, Remy, and Millie, tucked into their little beds and snuggled up safe and warm by your side, wake up and begin a new adventure each night. Some experiences are so much fun, you may want to relive them again and again. Like all adventures, there needs to be a beginning. For Harper and Remy, and later Millie, the beginning started a very long time ago. It was before you were born, before your mom and dad were born, and even before your grandparents were born. Harper and Remy got their start in 1900, at the turn of a new century in a small village at the foothills of Boise, Idaho. A young toy maker named Jack wanted to create cute toys for his three children. His youngest, Evie, his middle child, Constance, and his oldest, Titus. With snow all around his little cabin, his wife at the sewing machine, and the children tucked in bed, Jack worked at his small workbench near the only fireplace in the cabin. Jack was sketching animals, which he and his wife could make as toys and sell at the store he worked at. You see, Jack started each day working at the local toy store, stocking shelves and selling toys to children in the village. Each night, he would remember the expressions on the children's faces when they received their new toys. He used this knowledge to design what he thought would be the most desired toys in the world. Jack noticed that small stuffed animals like mice, hamsters, and puppies were the most popular toys with the children in the village. With that information that night, 
he was inspired to create a couple of the cutest stuffed toys anyone had ever owned. As it got later, Jack's wife, Mrs. Drapkin, kissed Jack on the cheek and said she was going to sleep. Soon after, Jack started yawning from all his hard work. It didn't help that he was also really cozy in his chair near the fireplace. He soon put his head down on the workbench and fell fast asleep. In the olden days, people didn't dream unless the Sandman visited them. And for the Sandman to come to your house, everyone had to be sleeping. Unlike Santa Claus, the Sandman could not get to every home in one night. So some nights, people just didn't dream. With everyone in the Drapekin house fast asleep and the Sandman being in Idaho, he stopped by to sprinkle dream dust on each member of the family. When he got to Jack, he looked at the cute mice Jack had drawn on his sketch pad, and he accidentally spilled dream dust on the drawings. Later that night, Jack had a most colorful dream, like the kind he used to have as a kid. He dreamt he was in dreamland, and he was being shown around by the two mice he had drawn in his sketch pad. Harper, one of the mice, came up to Jack and said, Hi, I am Harper, and this is my sister Remy. Wow, you can speak, said Jack. You look exactly like the mice I was drawing. Well, when you were young, you probably went to our part of Dreamland, and you must have seen us there and remembered us, Remy said. Since the Sandman spilled the dream dust on our sketch, now whenever anyone sleeps near us, they can join us in Dreamland, even if the Sandman didn't visit their home. Harper added, Our part of Dreamland is usually just for kids. But since you design toys for kids, you can enter Dreamland even though you are a grown-up. Yes, Jack said. Now I remember. When I was young, I did visit Dreamland. I guess now when I dream, I go somewhere else. You are correct, said Remy. Dreamland is just one part of Dream World, which has many different lands. When you sleep, you go to one of those other lands. They can be fun, but Dreamland is the nicest, safest, and most fun land in all of Dream World. Remy continued, There are no monsters, witches, or ghosts in Dreamland, and there are lots of places to travel, adventures to be had, and people and animals to meet. How long have you two been living in Dreamland? asked Jack. Well, we are not sure, said Harper. Ever since we can remember we have been there, time is different in Dreamland. Instead of having the past, present, and future, we can visit all three times any time we want. Remy added, We would show you around, but it may be best for you to wake up now while we are fresh in your memory, so you can finish the sketches and make us into real stuffed animals. Yes, said Harper. And when you make us, please make us nice beds that we can sleep in while we travel off to Dreamland. Jack woke up. He sat up in his chair and thought to himself that his dream was one of the most real dreams he had ever had. He had forgotten what a beautiful place Dreamland was. Then he looked down at his sketches and noticed a small pile of sparkling dust on each drawing. He paused. Had it all been a dream, or did it really happen? That night, 
Jack finished his sketches of Harper and Remy, and in the morning, he gave the drawings to Mrs. Drapkin so she could make the two mice with her sewing machine. While Mrs. Drapkin was lighting the fire to make breakfast, she ran out of matches and was just about to throw the empty matchbox in the fireplace when Jack told her to save it. He thought it was the perfect size for Harper and Remy's bed, so he asked Mrs. Drapkin for another one. All during the day, while Jack was working at the toy store, he kept thinking about the dream he had the night before and about how real it had seemed. When he got home, he couldn't wait to see what Mrs. Drapkin had sewn up while he was at work. Sitting on his workbench were two large matchboxes. On the outside of each box, Mrs. Drapkin had drawn three mice pedaling a three mouse powered bicycle under the name Royal Star Brand. He slowly opened the first box to see Harper tucked snugly between his bed and blanket, smiling up at him. He opened the second box and found Remy tucked into bed, smiling too. Although Jack had left his wife detailed sketches of Harper and Remy, he was surprised at how every detail was exactly like the Harper and Remy of his dream. At dinner time, when his wife and three children, Evie, Constant, and Titus were eating, he showed them Harper and Remy and told everyone about the dream he had had the night before. The kids instantly fell in love with the mice and asked their dad if they could have them. Jack had planned on taking Harper and Remy to the toy store the next day to see if Mr. Lambert, the owner of the store, wanted to place an order of copies of Harper's and Remy's to sell in the store. Titus, since you are the oldest, you can pick which mouse you want to sleep with tonight, Jack said. Titus picked Harper. Constance was happy because secretly she wanted Remy anyway. Evie was too young to speak, but Jack could tell she was not happy being left out of choosing a mouse. Evie, you are too young to be able to sleep with Harper or Remy, but when I read to all of you tonight, you can each take turns playing with the mice, said Jack. Evie, in a few days when you turn three years old, you can have your own mouse. Evie seemed happy with that decision. For the first time in ages, all three of the children had all their chores done, their teeth brushed, their faces washed, and they were in bed even before Mrs. Drapkin had to ask them. It was the Drapkin family tradition to gather all the children together in one bed and for Jack to tell a story each evening. Most of the time, he would make up stories based around the stuffed animals in the toy store. This evening, Jack told them about his trip to Dreamland and how he met Harper and Remy. He also told them what Remy had said. If the mice were tucked up into their little matchboxes and sleeping near you at night, you could enter Dreamland anytime, even if the Sandman had not sprinkled dream dust on you. Constance and Titus could not wait to fall asleep so they could start dreaming. Right after Jack told them a story, both children said they were tired and ready for bed. Constance took Remy to her bedroom and Titus took Harper to his. Poor Evie didn't have a new mouse to sleep with, so when Jack tucked her into her crib, 
she snuggled up to her old stuffed hamster doll that Jack called Mr. Hamster. And after everyone was tucked into bed, Jack went and sat by the fireplace with Mrs. Drapkin. Meanwhile, Titus took Harper out of his matchbox and told Harper that when he slept that night, he would like to go to dreamland like his dad did and have Harper show him around. Harper continued to smile up at Titus in response. Before Titus fell asleep, he pretended that Harper was walking through sand dunes, his blankets, and that Harper could fly wherever he wanted to. In the other room, Constance was doing the same thing. Only she pretended that her blankets were knee-high, soft green grass that she and Remy were making their way through to find Titus and Harper. After a while, both Constance and Titus grew tired. So they tucked their new little friends into their matchbox beds and both fell fast asleep. <laughs> 